Hi folks, we're talking about the cloud, um, and there's not many terms in computing or in IT that is more confusing to people than the cloud. I think that there's there's a lot of problems with the terminology because some people use it to refer to literally anything that is running on someone else's server. That's in the cloud. Um, but thankfully there are some more specific meanings to cloud computing um, and to the, the cloud than that. So we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about the cloud and specifically around cybersecurity um, considerations as well. So the cloud is essentially we're talking about cloud computing where we've got a network of remote servers that are providing some services. And some of the categories of services that a cloud infrastructure can provide can be infrastructure as a service. So that's um, basically a platform that allows you to host virtual machines, so run entire computers and servers within it. So for example, um, we might have a, a virtual desktop infrastructure, a VDI, system. And examples of that include over an OpenStack. So our overt system that we have for Hacktivity is an example of using overt, which is infrastructure as a service. So it runs uh, entire virtual machines across a bunch of servers. Platform as a service is where hosts access, it hosts access to a managed server to host software. So basically the um, platform as a service allows you to just run specific pieces of software and they take care of the other layers. So they'll manage like the operating system for example and they'll just host your software. So an example of that is Google App Engine. You can upload um, one specific like web app for example and it will host that for you. Um, and you don't have access to manage things like the software running it on the operating system that they take care of all those kinds of details. Software as a service is where you, they, they just provide software and you use it. So for example, Google Drive, like Google Docs, Gmail, like most all of that stuff where you um, like online out, version of Outlook, for example, um, all of that is happening on their Google's and Microsoft's um, servers and you just get the to experience the software that's not running on your computer, it's running on their computer. And typically it's deployed across a number of actual servers that they manage. So one of the things that this all has in common is that it uses virtualization technologies. So it's doing provisioning of resources to um, meet the demands that are required at the time. Um, the virtualization also means that it's hardware independent and it uses resource pooling so that it resources are assigned from a pool of resources. So for example you could have a whole you know racks full of servers and you those servers are busy working on for various clients and they become available to whoever needs them at the time and is willing to pay to access them. For example, for third party um, options anyway. Um, so they're provisioning the resources on, the dem on demand and that gives you um, elasticity, which is where it's based on the real time needs at the moment, um, agility and scale. So that means that a um, business that suddenly has a requirement to meet twice as much demand as it ever had might just be willing to foot the bill to suddenly have twice as much server capacity and they don't need to make that investment if they're using a third party provider. They just pay more and suddenly they've got more resources. Um, and usually it's cost based on the usage metrics. So the more that you use the resource, the more that you pay. And quite often the way that they, those are calculated are quite fine grained. So to the point where if you're not using a resource, if you're not using a VM, you shut it down because you're paying um, for every minute that you have it running. Um, 
but you know what I was referring to there is public cloud where you're basically outsourcing access to the cloud infrastructure um, and typically you're using remote data centers and it can be cost effective especially to start up for a startup company for example where um, you don't know how much like clients you're going to end up getting and you don't want to invest in a lot a, a lot of hardware um, you can just basically pay to use Google or Amazon's um, cloud services. Um, and there's private cloud where you actually have used those same technologies but on your own servers. So for example, our Eva infrastructure, they run on our servers um, and we've got a lot of very powerful servers that we uh, that are just ours and that we manage, um, which has a larger upfront cost but um, you know, as a running cost, we're not paying someone else to run those, we run them ourselves. Um, and so in, in that case, we um, ha are running with a local data center and our local servers. And a hybrid approach is where you do a bit of both. So you use um, the public cloud infrastructure and also some private cloud. And some of the information that you might want to do that is you might have some particularly confidential information that you don't feel comfortable um, storing remotely. So you want to keep that on premises. And in that case, you um, might opt for a private cloud deployment. Um, and you might use the public cloud to, for added elasticity. So for example, if you meet your capacity and you need more capacity, you might be able to use um, an external provider to get the extra bit that you need when you need it. So provisioning can satisfy redundancy requirements. So we're not dependent on hardware. Um, service instances can be quickly created. Um, so there's that redundancy there that we can have multiple servers if we if we feel like we need to load balance for example we might have a single server and then we can have a load balancer in front of that and then we could just create a bunch more servers if we start to meet our capacity um, and cloud computing can be configured can be configured as a redundant service and we can um, fail over to a caching service well for example you cloudflare um, are an external company that they do a lot of um, they, they have a few different services but their main one is basically that they act um, as a caching service between uh, your users they act, access your website through Cloudflare which can cache or, or cache um, s some of the resources to make that faster and they can also provide um, protections around DDoS attacks and, and other things so backups and the cloud. So there are um, there are services where you can have data storage uh, as part of a remote cloud um, deployment. And one of the advantages of using that is it scales um, and you, you can use it as a remote backup site. Uh, is it reliable? Well, most are. I mean, the cloud, if you're using a service that's managed by Google or Amazon, um, then there's a pretty good chance that it's designed well um, and there, there's a lot of users that they've got a lot of incentive to make sure that it is um, reliable. There, you can use things like consumer storage like Google Drive, um, Dropbox, Amazon Cloud Drive, where basically you know you just have a place where you, you can copy your files onto it. Um, there are online backups and data storage services. So this is designed more to be a larger scale backup solution. So you've got Google Cloud Storage, Amazon S3, which is a simple storage service, Amazon Glacier. Glacier is interesting because it's designed uh, knowing that it's hard to get stuff out of it. So it's for backing things up where you can send things into it, but if you want them out again, it could take a long time to get it back. 
um, because you know presumably they use tape so tape storage and things like that. So when you try and get something out of it, it can take a while for them to actually retrieve it for you. Um, but it's cheaper to store stuff in if you don't need to be able to get it out again as quickly. And if you're trying to do backups for an organization, then you might not need it super fast to be back. Or there might be some things that you need to be able to be, get back quickly and other things that can take longer. And then you could use a service like that and it will it, be cheaper. There are encrypted backup solutions like Spider Oak and Mega um, and other storage solutions like CrashPlan and Backblaze where there, there are options if you configure them, if you choose how you configure them. But you can do end-to-end -end encryption where um, the, the providers don't get access to your files because only you have the key that was used to encrypt your files and it's sent to their servers. Um, so, you know, that might be an important security property for you. Um, so how do we reason about security and all of these complicated systems? Well, it can be complicated because often you've got multi-tenant systems, which means that you're sharing the hosting with other people. So you've got one server and there are lots of clients that are storing their information onto that server. So there's identity management and access control there that needs to be managed correctly. Um, and who has to manage those, that information is like interesting because you need to know what you're responsible for. Because for example, um, like my website, for example, is stored on a multi-tenant system where there's other users of that system. And if I set my access control up in a way where other other people I could set my file permissions up in a way that other people that share that servers could access these files so you just need to be careful and aware of that um, and the the um, the actual hosting provider needs to be aware as well of what their responsibilities are um, there can be lots of physical servers in lots of places so you need to like wonder about the security of the actual physical security so um, and whether or not you are even know where your things are stored in reality. Um, so if there's if there's a company that has lots of different data centers around the place, do you know where your information is going to physically be stored and how secure it is? Um, sometimes, sometimes you don't. But you might still be confident um, in because of the policies and procedures they have in place and what they, the information that they publish. But it is something that you need to consider. The operating system, the platform that's running on, the databases, virtual networking, and application security. So who has a responsibility of those things? It's something that you need to be aware of and consider. So with um, infrastructure as a service, you're responsible for basically all of those things because you're just deploying virtual machines that you completely manage. With platform as a service, um, some of that stuff is managed by the hosting company. Which of those things you need to make sure that you understand correctly um, so that you manage the security of the parts that you're responsible for while um, Google, for example, manage the like, operating system versions, for example and patches and updates. So if you have, if there is a single security breach in a multi-tenant system, it can have a wide reaching impact because it can hit every company that is using that multi-tenant multi system. And um, also it can be the case that so if some tenants are doing things that are insecure, whether the system's designed in a way that still keeps each other user um, secured, for example. So you could have attacks that are actually originating from other tenants on that same server or on those same servers. Um, and the service provider employees, do they have access to the information? What level of restriction do each of the employees at Google have, for example, in terms of accessing all the different servers that are running? is a legitimate question that you should ask yourself. Um, and then there's external threats and vulnerabilities um, as well.
So there's lots of places the attack, attacks can start from. One of the main advantages of public clouds is the cost, and it's externally managed, which has an impact on security. Um, if you think about Google's security practices versus you running your own server as a startup company with a, a handful of employees, there's a pretty good chance Google are going to do a better job than you are at some of those things. Um, like physical security, probably Google have better things in place than you would if you were just a small company with an office, for example, and you had a server in there. Like Google's going to have better physical security in place than you would. Um, but it's often impossible to remotely order, or even including physical, physically order, some of these services. So, for example, um, at, with Amazon Web Services, you're not allowed to do a security order of, like, actually even pen test your own systems without getting their permission first and, and in, informing them that you're about to do that. Um, and so, and you're certainly not allowed to order their physical security. You can't turn up and ask the, to be let in and look around the premises. Um, certainly not as a small... Um, user of their systems anyway. Um, so, the, but yeah, one of the main considerations is that all of your, um, all your, your data is being stored and processed somewhere else on a computer that's owned by someone else. Um, and that provider has access to all the data that you give them, uh, in most cases, um, unless you're being really thoughtful about the way that you're storing and processing that information. There's privacy concerns there and around the employees that get access to that information and how it's secured. And there's legal and compliance issues. So for example, if you're in the, the EU or um, the UK and you have some, some data that you're storing on a server, does that server comply with GDPR and are they doing all the right things for like European laws, for example, and to protect the privacy of the customers? Um, so one of the points here is there's, well, as soon as you start using um, a public cloud is things are outside of your control. Um, and it's just, you know, something to be aware of. There's potential around availability of services um, if, they, if their services go down. But again, it depends on the company, uh, the reliability of the company that you're using. And maybe you actually end up with something better than if you're doing it yourself anyway. So there's shared responsibility and you need to know who's responsible for which layer. So there's the application application software, operating system software, the network. So is the host somewhat responsible for this layer? Um, I guess it you know, depends on what you have control over. There's the hypervisor, which usually the host is responsible for, and there's the physical layer. So, some questions to ask when you're making decisions around cloud-based um, deployment and security. So, are you allowed to do security audits and penetration tests? Uh, is that a problem or not? Um, you know, how much notice you have to give? Is that acceptable? Um, where's the physical location and what's the security there? Is the information encrypted at rest? So when things are stored on a hard drive, for example, are they encrypted at that stage or is it unencrypted at rest? Uh, and what about server-to-server -server transmission? Uh, is that encrypted? Or is the like backbone communications between servers unencrypted? Um, and you know that can be the case. And how is the responsibility shared? So like what's my security role if we take on those services? So in conclusion, you know, every organization has to um, be able to function under adverse conditions and recover from problems. So we need backups and redundancy in place. Cloud computing, as we've just described, provides a possible solution. Actually, it's amazing what's possible with cloud computing, which is, you know, if you look at the um, what we have now uh, and all these amazing services and things that, that are available to us on, on the internet, a lot of the companies wouldn't exist without outsourcing to cloud computing. Google and Amazon host a lot. A lot of websites um, are hosted on those um, those servers. 
Uh, but you just need to be careful when you're considering what the pros and cons are so that you're aware um, of those facts. And, th and then when your actual demand is high enough and you're using a lot of computing resources, then it might make more sense to have a private cloud uh, where you have your own services, your own servers that you're managing. It uh, just means that there's more that you're managing in-house. Um, so there's lots of things to consider there. Cloud computing is, um, you know, we're just scratching the surface there, really, but the, there's a lot to consider. And hopefully this has helped you to understand how cloud computing, what cloud computing is and how it's related to security.